Good evening, Mr. Superintendent, evening. Chair Bowen, and school board members. Thank you very much, Ms. Steedy, for, uh, for letting us come to speak for you today. Um, we have uh, been working with Dr. Gale uh, a lot here lately, but uh, on behalf of the Greater Big Bend Towson Chamber of Commerce, I'm really excited to be with you all to discuss a few things. We've got a few slides we, that are up here to discuss with you. So the Chamber, uh, the end of last year after going through what all of us went through with COVID, uh, we really wanted to put a focus on what we needed to do as a community to, to shift and really attack uh, and push this community forward uh, with a focus on jobs and talent and education. So we kind of tweaked our mission and our vision. Our, our mission, again, is to lead and promote the success of business, driving a higher quality of life for all of our community, which, again, is something that all of us uh, are, are really stand behind. We have uh, three strategic priorities that we're focused on, talent, workforce, and education, economic competitiveness and business climate, uh, and community and prosperity. Again, all three of these are, are kind of our focus areas within the chamber, something that our, our, our committees are focused on a daily basis, and again, our, our team uh, at the chamber, led by Sue Dick, our president, is something that we're focused on on a daily basis. So based on that, uh, we really started, wanted, wanted to have something that the community could focus on a, on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis that we could communicate to you all. So with that, we, we developed what we wanted to call our community scorecard. So this is something that's information that is already available uh, from several sources, including OEV and DEO and the Florida Chamber Foundation. But these are numbers that are specific to our community. These are numbers that we think are something that all of us should be focused on. The top line is more on the jobs uh, basis, looking at both the number of jobs that our community has with a focus on private sector jobs. Uh, of course, our focus on driving the creation of new businesses with a focus on minority and small and women-owned businesses. Uh, Vice Chair Jones, again, working with his team, this is something that we're trying to elevate and promote and make sure that our community is focused on. And of course, unemployment, driving that unemployment rate down by creating new jobs. Um, I saw something from uh, my, my industry, from ABC, I saw today, they said this year alone, our industry needs 430,000 new jobs in our industry alone. Uh, so that is something that all of our industries are facing. And again, what you all as our school system are working on a daily basis, driving that, that new talent and that new workforce that we're looking at. The second line is something that uh, our community, you all are focused on a daily basis, but I think it's something that we wanted to make sure that our community is focused on, is, is how, we're, how we're doing and how we're preparing students as they come to Leon County Schools. Um, you know, a lot of people now are focused with the passage of our CSC, that kindergarten readiness score is something that us as a community, we really need to pay close attention to and something that I'm gonna to talk to you here in a minute is something that we're working closely with Dr. Gale on and our support as, business, as a business community to the kindergarten and our school system. Again, following through that, how we're tracking with third grade reading scores, high school graduation rate, and then that post-secondary attainment rate is something that uh, all of us need to be focused on. What are we doing with uh, our community? What are what opportunities are we working through uh, again, we're working closely with Lively um, and making sure that we're pr promoting what Lively is doing and also giving them the support needed to, to really enhance and drive uh, the development of our community. And then the bottom line uh, is something that's more focused on what is taking place with poverty, um, with what's taking place with our crime, and also what our community is developing in GDP. Again, these are numbers that uh, are reported in several different aspects. Some of them are an annual, uh, annual numbers that we're looking at, and some of them are monthly. But again, it's something for all of us to start working on. I know that, again, the school system, the school board, and the schools individually are all focused on all of these things on a daily basis in the middle, and of course on the education side in that middle sector. But I think it's something that the community really needs to come together to really change uh, to help the entire community uh, move forward. Uh, one other thing I wanted to is highlight some of the things that we're doing specifically with you all in the last year and things that we're working to promote this year. First, uh, something that I'm really proud of that we're working with Dr. Gale on is the kindergarten classroom adoption we're looking for in the fall of 2021. This is something that we've worked with Superintendent Hannah on. We've discussed this uh, in great detail is we want to the chamber and Leon County Schools to partner 
and a classroom connection. We want to have every kindergarten classroom in this community adopted by a business. And that adoption is not just financial, but it's, it's time, it's, it's working in those classrooms, supporting them with what they need individually in each one of those classrooms, and making sure those, each one of those classrooms and those kids and those schools know that the community cares and is supporting them. And that's something that we're very proud of. And our goal is to have 100% of all those kindergarten uh, classrooms adopted. We're also working closely on a select uh, group of pre-K classrooms with Dr. Gale. We're going to work with them and also do a, a model within that on a, adoption of those classrooms as well, really to start engaging the business community with each one of those classrooms. Uh, the next thing we wanted to discuss is the work we're doing with you all in the Godby High School FAFSA application support. Again, uh, starting today, um, we had 14 Access Tallahassee and Chamber volunteers meeting one-on-one -on -one with uh, every Godby and Leon County virtual school senior to encourage and assist them in completing their application with FAFSA. Uh, the completion of the free application for this federal student aid is one of the best predictors of whether a high school senior will go on to college. Uh, seniors who completed the FFSA are 84% more likely to immediately enroll in post-secondary education according to the National College Access Network. Again, this is something that uh, we're very proud of working close with you all in a program called Beacon. Um, and it's a program Aspire in the Capital Region which is one of our uh, systems that we're co-leaders with. The next thing is, of course, youth leadership, youth leadership Tallahassee, which is a program created by Leadership Tallahassee within the chamber. The current YLT class is wrapping up their year, which is scheduled to be completed by the end of April. Uh, currently working with all the high schools to recruit sophomores, which will be next year's juniors, for the YLT class 18, which applications are due March 31st. And then uh, last but certainly not least is of course, Ms. Laura Rogers and her work with you all on the best and brightest. Uh, the 2021 award ceremony will be held on Wednesday, May 12th at 6.30. Uh, we had a record year of applicants with 161 high school seniors and 61 eighth grade essay finalists. To date, we have uh, recognized 2,283 high school seniors and 505 eighth graders. Thanks to Envision Credit Union, Sex Media Group, and other supporters, we have awarded cash scholarships total of $793,000 and have partnered with TCC on matching scholarships for top winners. Each year, 75 volunteers and community leaders serve as interview, training, and judges. Again, I'm just here today to kind of give you a lay of some of the things we're trying to do this year and in future years, working closely with you all. Again, um, this is something you all, in your, in your world you live in, y'all are focused on, and y'all have done an amazing job. But to move the entire community forward, we need to get all of us uh, on that bus, uh, working with you all closely, supporting you all, and having that private business community engage with you all. So again, I uh, appreciate all of your time today, and we'll come back periodically every month to kind of give you an update on where that scorecard is and to ask, uh, ask you all if you have any questions, make sure we're supporting you correctly, and make sure we can keep driving this community forward. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. No, we were going to applaud, I thought. <laughs> much. We really appreciate the hard work and I'm going to call it the attention and energy that you give to this community from the chamber. And these activities certainly do drive the quality of life for our students and our community. So we hope that you will be there for a long, long time to support us. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and we, we feel your care. And thank you on behalf of the parents and this board and, and all of us. Uh, and I'd like to echo what the board chair is saying, yes. Jay, to you and Sue and, yes. and Laura. I don't think our relationship's ever been stronger, and it gets right. stronger each and every day. And we're so appreciative of you and our partnership and working with us yes. to help solve some of these problems and some of these issues that we face in our community. But it's going to take just that, all of us uh, focusing, being laser-focused together to uh, work to improve kindergarten readiness scores and third-grade reading scores and Absolutely. graduation rates and post-secondary attainment rates and we're glad you're partnering with us and, yes, very, and very appreciative. Well, we y'all have done an amazing job, and we're, we're happy to support and, and keep pushing forward. I know President Dick is here with you, and I think you said Laura Rogers was yes, there. Someone else here? here? Okay. Thank you. Thank I you for coming. I thought I saw some folk on the other side of the building. Okay. Thank you so much. We Thank really you. Y'all have a great you. evening, right. and good night. Excuse Thank you so much. Uh, Madam Chair, Jay, Jay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> 
What I think is also very important about what you've described, I know that um, for a long time now, the Tallahassee Chamber and the Florida Chamber are the ones who first rang the bell to make, it, make us aware of the impact on our economy as early as uh, the, the, the testing scores and the, and, the, and, the, and the preparedness of our young people. To hear now see that conversation come now with solutions to those problems, I think says a great deal about this chamber. And I think it says a great deal about you, uh, Sue. It says a great deal about you as, their, our, as our chair, uh, Laura Rogers and her continuing work. I'd also would also like to acknowledge that YLT <laughs> was founded by the greatest class ever. Oh. <laughs> LT20 founded YLT okay. some 18 years ago. I'm a proud alum of YLT, of, of uh, Leadership Tallahassee, oh. Class 20. But what I also think is so very, very important, if we also could do our best to ask our businesses to take greater advantage of our apprenticeship programs and our externship programs at Lively uh, Technical College. At present, I think the number is less than 10 businesses that have formalized apprenticeship programs. You, your company, as I am very much aware, has one. I think we can go a long way if we provide uh, more opportunity and options for that for that cohort as we now try to put greater attention on the important and Im importance and impact of career and technical education. Our superintendent will tell you that here in our district we have a thing called from cradles to careers. So here now that coupled with what you're already doing, if that same your same membership were to buy into that project process as well, that we can have a prepared workforce, which you all already know is a major issue for us. But we also know that the remedy for that problem is found in our lively vocational technical college and the young people that we're routing there through both uh, dual enrollment, uh, adult enrollment coming from our ACE program, but the but. That partnership is also going to be critical that we'll be able to remedy what we know is the, the, the workforce crisis we have in our community. Yes, so thank you for what you're doing, and I look forward to your continuing assistance and, and also continuing to make that a priority as well. So yes. thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Jones. Madam Chair. I, I want to – go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say I want to tee off on what you just brought forward, uh, Vice Chair Jones, is – Something that we were able to do this past year through uh, through a grant from the PPP through the county, we started a, a new a new site called Talent Hub. So Talent is Hub is something that now we're connecting with Leon County Schools. We're connecting with several different partners, including Lively Technical College, where we're encouraging communication between people that need need workers. So ha having the businesses fill that uh, void on that side, loading in their information, what job opportunities they have, letting the students from Leon County Schools see the career opportunities with all these businesses, and then connecting the dots with Lively, with Career Source, with TCC, and with Tempo, uh, with the sheriff, with his all-in program. Again, it's just, it's a centralized hub where we're communicating these things. Again, it's something we're just creating. It's just coming off the ground, but all the pieces are now starting to be aligned. Uh, it's something uh, that's specifically on the Tallahassee Police Department project that my company's involved with. We are promoting very heavily, and it's and it's starting to see those benefits to it. And it's it's something that uh, there's other communities around the state of Florida that are paying close attention to what we're doing. But again, you all have developed some great programs. It's, it's our job to make sure we're, we're communicating those and getting people to the table to utilize those resources. I agree completely, Vice Chair Jones. Those are something we're all trying to work towards. If I may also add, and I think and I, wouldn't, I would be remiss if I'd let this opportunity slide. Here as a district, we're now talking about how we are uh, reimagining our procurement activities, right? I want everyone to know that it was, it was uh, Jay Smith and Ajax <clears throat> We're one of the principals as a principal employer who have 
made such an enormous commitment to our lot of vocational technical program by bringing on apprentices and externs. Most specifically, we have a $65 million police station project <laughs> here in our community, uh, which has been awarded to Ajax. Ajax made a commitment to exceed the op the the, the uh, the aspirational targets for the employment of minority women in small businesses, but then they also took it to another level to then incentivize workforce opportunities for persons who are either at Lively Vocational Technical College in the Tempo program with the city of Tallahassee, as well as those persons with the 1,000 Jobs Initiative for the sheriff having enormous impact. I just want to acknowledge you as a great corporate citizen in our community and just talk to, and just acknowledge the enormous impact you're having. And, and here now with you as chair of the Chamber of Commerce, we're going to see the exponential return on your leadership. So thank you so very much. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Wood. Um, can I add one more thing to your list? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> this is something that I experienced as a high school principal that helped lots of students, and it's not quite as... Uh, directed at workforce, Lively Votech, which is, we've just talked about, are really important. That is working with our businesses who might not be able to do that, but could provide an externship possibility for a senior in high school just to experience the work world. And that has to do with learning how to get to a job on time and do what you're asked to do and dress appropriately and maybe find out if you want to be an office assistant or if you want to be an attorney in that uh, law office. So I just want to broaden the conversation a little bit to say that, you know, businesses who may not feel they can fit into the workforce part might be able to host a high school senior for a semester. And that student can get credit, it's called executive internship credit, and they have like four opportunities to get credit so they could do it their junior and their senior year and I'd love to work with you on that if you're interested. I think it's a great idea. Anything we can do to expose students on the opportunities that are in our community and the, the right. you know that's that's what we need to be doing. I mean again we we get busy in our world we live in and the jobs we do we 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 forget about the simple, easy little things that you can do to expose. It can be a flower um, shop. It can be, exactly. you know, lots of things. So, so we can come up with a, some different ideas and okay. love to work with you on okay, some thank you. great Wonderful. programs. Wonderful. Thank you, Greater Tallahassee Chamber of Commerce, for being here tonight and sharing with us the wonderful initiatives that you're undertaking. Well, thank so really you very much for the opportunity, it. and you'll have a great evening. Thank you. Thank each of you for being here. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am.